Well, praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Inman, and you're now listening to the Word of Deliverance. Thank you for tuning in to our program today. We've got a real good program for you today, so I trust you'll enjoy this. I've got with me Michelle Patton. Michelle, I believe so many people today are mixed up about the Bible, and I think people have put things before God, and I think there's a great falling away in this country, especially, mm -hmm. and in other countries. They don't even have the gospel in many of them. I mean, that's I don't want to go into that right now, but in our overseas programs, we put a lot of money and invested a lot of time in it, and some of the feedback we get that says, you're the only source of information, uh, actually, you're the only source there is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> they said, you're the best source of information, but we know that there's not many preachers over there. They say there's none. I don't doubt that. But look, let's bring them out to this. In the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 9, verses 15 and 16, Actually, it's 14, 15, and 16. We find out that there's a great revelation here about the last will of a person died. Who is that person? Jesus. Jesus Christ left his last will. Mm -hmm. Many people don't understand this. But the ideal is here in 914 is the royal blood that takes a faithful person. Mm -hmm. And it's not for everybody. It's those that will willingly submit their life to Jesus Christ they can enter into a covenant with him and be sprinkled with the royal blood of Jesus Christ. And then they can be, have eternal life. Yes. They can be a great person in the world to come. They can have a greater uh, cognitive faculties. In other words, who you are, it'll make you a greater person. You can have miraculous faculties. Miraculous faculties. You can know things that other men cannot know, do things that other men cannot do. It's such a wonderful blessing, but... The ideal is here, our Bible is actually a last will. I talked to a lady the other day, you were the witness, I think, that uh, she was talking about, she knew all this stuff, but she didn't want to come to church. Right. You want to call us on the telephone, mm -hmm. you know, and talk to us, and we just don't have time for that. I mean, I don't mind talking to people for a minute, but you can't do Bible studies over the telephone, right? <laughs> right. I told her, I, I, I want to tell her, I don't know if I got a chance to even tell her or not, but Forsaken not the assembling of yourselves together, as a manner of some of you are, is one of the things that lays down the criteria for salvation. Right. Reading the last will and testament of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. you find out that, first of all, everybody's name is in here. Mm -hmm. People don't, well, I'm not called of God. Oh, yes, you are. Mm -hmm. Everybody's called of God that's under the sound of our voice. Right. Because it says, go get all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. But the thing about it is, the things written in the will is saying, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as a manner of, manner of some of you are. So if you don't follow the rules that's in the will, can you still be an, an inheritor? It talks about in verse 15, an eternal inheritance. That's eternal life. Right. That's a, a city you know, built four square. It's mm -hmm. going to be forever. Streets of gold. You cannot inherit the city. You cannot be a part of it if you don't follow the rules. Amen. Am I right? Yes. Okay, we're going to bring it out to the people. I want to bring it out to the people about some things that are very great. I want you to tell us about this man called Jacob. Mm -hmm. Because in chapter 32, it tells you about Jacob who became Israel. Mm -hmm. Now, many people have never heard this before, so I want you to help me carefully bring it out. We find out that Jacob was, his very name talks about supplanter. He was an evil person. The supplanter is one that steals or does something through deception right. to get another person's blessings mm -hmm. or material things or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, or some kind of corrupted stuff. Right. It's actually an ideal of corruption, and Jacob was, but in chapter 32, he became a person who was willing to seek the Lord. Tell us what happened there. It, that's where God had touched, or the angel had touched uh, his hip, and his hip had came out of joint. And from then forth, he called him Israel. He says, because he's not going to walk no longer the same as he did before as Jacob, but he's going to walk under the anointing of Israel, which is of God. So he was going to walk by faith. Yes. But notice where he goes right before this. It says that he wrestled there. He went there across for Jacob to pray. And he stayed there until the breaking of day. And they wrestled with him a man. And the man said, okay, let me go. And he said, no, no. Mm -hmm. Not going to let you go. Not, not until, until you bless me. You bless me. 
So he said, okay, what is your name? He said, it's Jacob. He said, okay, you'll never be called that again but Israel. Your name shall be no more Jacob. So from that point on, you find Jacob was two different people. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the rest of us. I mean, you know, some days you get up, you don't feel so good. Right. <laughs> okay, but I want you to tell the people, give them a few scriptures here and show them how that Jacob was two different people from that point on through the rest of the book of Genesis. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll find out how Jacob was, when he was walking in the flesh, they refer to him as Jacob. And as you find that in 40, Genesis chapter 42, verse 36, where it says, And Jacob, their father, said unto them, Me, have ye bereaved of my, chil of my children? Joseph is not, and Simeon is not. And ye will take Benjamin away all these things are against me. So this is where he starts to complain. And at this point, Joseph was already in Egypt, and he had been there for um, a long time now. And then you had, they went to go get corn um, out of Egypt, and Simeon had, uh, Joseph had kept Simeon there in Egypt with him. And they went, he told him, he says, I want you to go get Benjamin and bring him here too. So when their sons had came back with this report, Jacob was mad. He says, no, you don't bereave me of my children. You don't look. And he says, I ain't having this. So he was talking then as Jacob. Yes. Okay, I understand where you're going with this. But now look, let's take them to chapter 48, verse 20 and 21. We can tell them in chapter 49, verse 1, what happens. Whenever Jacob was anointed, in chapter 49, verse 1, what does it say there? It says, And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather ye yourselves together that I may tell you the things shall, that shall befall you in the last days. Now the next verse. Verse 2, Gather yourselves together and hear ye sons of Jacob and hearken unto Israel your father. Okay. They were sons of Jacob, which was evil. Uh -huh. But now they're going to listen to Israel, their father. Yes. So this was the spiritual sense. He begins to tell them what's going to happen to them in the last days, right? Yes. So now he's got that anointing up on them. Amen. Okay, go back to chapter 48, verse 20 and 21. And let's talk about passing this anointing to another person. Mm -hmm. Let's talk to them because it speaks about this. In the book of Hebrews, verse 21, chapter 11, it talks about by faith Jacob, who when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Jacob and worshiped leaning up on the top of his staff. Tell us here in chapter 48, verse 20 and 21, what really transpires. It says, and he had blessed them that day and saying, in thee shall Israel bless, saying, God make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh and set Ephraim before Manasseh. And Israel said unto Joseph, behold, I die, but God shall be with you and bring you again at, unto the land of your fathers. Okay, Joseph tried to stop him from putting Ephraim first, right? Yes. So Manasseh was supposed to be the first one, but Jacob says no. Israel says no. Or should no. I say Israel? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Israel says no, it shall be my son that, that Ephraim shall be the greatest. Right. Okay, let's now fast forward all the way to Hebrews 11. Mm -hmm. verse 21 first thing he does here it's a little bit misinterpreted here uh, from translation by faith uh, it says that Jacob <clears throat> it really should say by faith Israel when he was dying blessed both the sons of Jacob and worshipped leaning up on his staff okay we want to bring this out to the people what this really means mm -hmm. because there's no mention of a, of a, a staff over there in the book of uh, Genesis 48, verse 20 and 21, mm -hmm. the word worship is not seen that well. You have to look at the root word that uh, gives you 1288, which comes from the word worship. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a little bit ambiguous, but it also talks about a curse and a blessing, right? Right. So whenever he blessed uh, Ephraim and he blessed Manasseh, he used this word Bara, I think, is the name of the Hebrew word, and it means either a blessing or a curse. Yes. So it could be either one, but it also talks about worshiping. Right. So we'll kind of leave that there for a minute and bring the people back to this in a few minutes. I think it's very interesting 
to know what this idea is about the anointing of God mm -hmm. that he's now talking to them out of the spirit of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now the Bible says <clears throat> in Acts 1.8 that you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Yes. You see this in the Old Testament. You see that people like Jacob and Saul even had the Spirit of God upon him. And at mm -hmm. one point they told Moses about people that prophesied. But all of Israel could not be anointed of God. Right. But in the New Testament, as many as received him, gave me him power to become the sons of God. And Acts 1.8 talks about the power of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And Acts 2.4 said they were all filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And that's all the 120. And if you look in Acts 2.38, he told the believers, as many of you, he said, repent and be you baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So we, as many of all of us in the New Testament, have this anointing every day, right? Yes. If you choose to walk in it, if you choose to labor in it, and if you choose to receive it and say, God, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Amen. I mean, you've got to pay the price if you do now. So let's get this a little bit differently. I want you to tell the people about this holy royal anointing that Israel began to speak over Ephraim and Manasseh. Yes. Tell us what it says and what really happened when he spoke these words. Amen. Well, if you look up this word um, staff in the, in the Strong's Concordance, you'll find how this anointing was able to, um, how he depended upon this um, the staff was kind of like a, a type of the anointing. So you're talking about in Hebrews 11:21. Yes. He worshipped leaning up on his staff. Yes. And the staff means what? It's, it says one that is possible. It says um, possible, which. Um, in other words, 44:64 is the Hebrew or the Greek root word. Yes. For this word staff. Mm -hmm. It says to name the Israel being used when Jacob was anointed. And it says through this seems to invoke through faith words which are comparable to a royal scepter. Okay. What you're really talking about here is the words that Israel spake mm -hmm. when this anointing was upon Jacob. He now is Israel. And these words began to be invoked, but it was by faith. Yes. And it was apparent that these were royal words, which can only be released through faith. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has to be genuine faith. Right. And, you know, summarizing all of this, it says it changes the destiny of, uh, of a person. It can change his life. And it will change and interfere with world affairs. Yes. I mean, there's a lot of people like Abraham. Look what he did by faith. He changed the world affairs. Yes. I mean, he's the father of many nations. Mm -hmm. So looking at this word staff it talks about scepter in other words the hands the laying on of jacob's hands was like a royal scepter Amen. whenever the king touched you you begin to live they were royal words yes. and it's like christ in us the hope of glory in colossians 1 27 this was actually christ speaking through jacob and made him israel with this anointing upon him right yes and now we have an anointing upon us according to first john chapter 2 verse 20 it says but ye have an unction from the holy one and ye know all things and this word unction is talking about in the strong's concordance 54 55 45 it's an unguent or a smearing that is a special endowment a chrism of the holy spirit and it says an anointing. So this is what Jacob had used to become Israel. Yes. Or what God put in him. Mm -hmm. It was an endowment given to him for a special purpose mm -hmm. to do special things. Yes. And we have this within a prescription usage. Yes. In other words, God has prescribed to us when he said, go to all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. That's like you read the directions on your prescription. Amen. <laughs> and okay, Mr. Holy Ghost, what I got to do? <laughs> go ye to all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Yes. And anointing, according to 1 John um, chapter 2, verse 27, it talks about an anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you that ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you all things. And is truth and is no lie. And even it, as it have taught you, ye shall abide in him. Well, this is very interesting. You know, when you find out that there is an anointing upon people when it's by faith. Yes. And we have a lot of people now that don't understand faith. But faith comes by the Holy Ghost. Amen. We told them in Acts 1.8. Jesus said you shall receive power once the Holy Ghost come upon you. Mm -hmm. What kind of power is it? 
It's the power to live holy and to do the will of God. Okay, it's actually meaning a supernatural. He said when the Holy Ghost, the word ghost, here comes into a superhuman spirit. It's a we are superhuman power. Yes. person. Miraculous powers? Yes, miraculous powers and a miracle in itself when it talks about to have miraculous faculties. So God makes us able. In other words, he said you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And, you know, here we find the idea that many people today say, well, I can't do this, and I, I know I can't really get anything out of the Bible, and, you know, I don't read the Bible because I don't understand it, and, oh, I had to buy this, uh, you know, Queen, Queen James Bible because I don't understand the King James. We know that these people have not got the Holy Ghost, right? Right. If they have, they have no prayer life, they have no Bible study, and therefore you can't do the will of God. Amen. But if you want to be a great person and break away from this world, Mm -hmm. break away from worldly affairs, break away from the things that the world wants to put upon you, this yoke, Mm -hmm. you've got to be full of the Holy Ghost, stay full of the Holy Ghost, and you've got to set yourself aside for God, right? Amen. Amen. Takes time to build your faith. Yes. And we know that when, um, because Israel had a uh, was under the anointing when he blessed his sons or or joseph's sons and he uh, blessed ephraim before manasseh and put him as first and this word blessed if you look in here in hebrews chapter 48 i mean genesis chapter 48 verses 20 it talks about and he blessed them that day and that word blessed is like we were saying it talks about it could either go for a blessing or a curse. So it's a Hebrew word that can mean either one. Yes. Okay. And in the beginning, when they went into the Canaan land, Ephraim went all the way in. And then Manasseh, only half of them went in. But we find out in here in Revelation chapter 7 that Ephraim is not mentioned in the, uh, the 144,000. Okay, so let's bring it out a little bit differently here. In this... Uh, scepter of righteousness Paul saw the laying on of Jacob's hand who had become Israel Mm -hmm. whenever he began to pray for these young men Paul saw it as a holy scepter a powerful royal scepter that gave these men royal permission to go in a certain direction right okay now what you're saying is here in Revelations chapter 7 when it talks about the 144,000 Jews where are where is the name of Ephraim? He's the one that had the great blessings, and Joseph tried to correct Jacob and tell him, or Israel tried to tell him, "Look, uh, you got the blessings on the wrong one. He's not the elder." Mm-hmm. But he could not do it. Jacob or Israel finally said to him, "Known my son, this shall be the greater." Specifically pointing to Ephraim. Tell us what that's about. How come he's not in Revelation seven? Well, Ephraim had the anointing, and he was supposed to be the the blessed, but it became a curse upon him because he did not continue in the laws of God. And if you look in all through Hosea, it tells you why Ephraim is not able to um, inherit the blessings of God because he it became a curse to him. And in Hosea chapter five, it says. Um, verse 5, then the pride of Israel doth testify to his face. Therefore, Israel and Ephraim shall fall for their iniquity, and Judah shall fall with them. And then it talks about in verse 3 of Hosea, I know Ephraim and Israel is not hid from me. For now, for now O Ephraim, thou committest whoredom, and Israel is defiled. And then you go on to verse 9. It says that Ephraim shall be desolate in the day of rebuke. Among the tribes of Israel have I made known that which shall surely be. And it talks about how Ephraim in verse 11 is oppressed and broken in judgment because he willingly did not walk after the commandments of the Lord. So you find out from this lesson that great royal anointing that was up on Ephraim was not really accepted in a sense to t- be taken serious or what happened here? It became a curse unto him. The blessing became a curse because he continued not in the laws of God. So they were in a covenant. Mm-hmm. They were in the covenant of Abraham. Yes. But Ephraim broke the covenant. Yes. And so he went away. Okay, let's talk to the people. When you look at this, I mean, apparently you don't find him anywhere in the book of Revelations. No. So tell us 
uh, exactly how this refers to Christians because Christians, you know, so many of them today, they will come to church and, you know, they make up their mind that they want to serve God. And I think that's exactly what's wrong. Right. They made only up their mind. Mm -hmm. They never made a commitment of their heart and never really entered into a covenant with Jesus Christ. And if they did, they've got real big problems. Second yes. Peter talks about a dog returning to his vomit, mm -hmm. a cow, a, I mean a, a, a sow, like a pig going to the mud. Tell us about uh, Matthew twelve forty three. Yes. Well, you know, people get saved and they want to enter into a covenant with God, and they do, but then they decide that they want to turn back because they want to go to the things of the world. And this is what happens when they go back, and it says that they get into a curse. It says in, in Matthew chapter 12, verse 43, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he is come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Then sh goeth he, and taketh him with, him with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Okay, so you find out that people are not very well read in the last will and testament of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, you look how short, Michelle, this life is, and then you look to uh, Revelations chapter 20, verse 12, you find out that whosoever's name is not found written in the book of life is cast into the lake in fire. Mm -hmm. And that's eternal separation from God. Right. You know, you find this is very, uh, very informative. I don't think many people talk about this today at all. Right. But you have to have a good church. Sometimes people, you know, because there's no church around, Mm -hmm. I believe that listening to demonic preaching, I believe, is one of the worst things you can do. Yes. You know, I have complaints all the time from people out of town. Well, there's only, here in this town where I'm at, there's only modern churches that don't even mention being born again. Mm -hmm. And they can't go to church. What do you, uh, ref you know, how do you see people like that? What do you suggest for them? I just say, s seek the Lord more diligently, Keep praying, keep fasting, and, and stay in your word, and I believe God will lead you. So just fills, fulfills the scriptures, many are called, but few are chosen. Yes. You know, I encourage everyone to put all of your faith in the power of the Holy Ghost. He gave you power to live for God. He gave you power to know the right decisions. You can know things. The Holy Ghost has so many different uh, advantages. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 12, 7, Michelle, you know that it mentions there that it's given to the believers to profit. Yes. God wants us to profit, but you cannot profit with a carnal mind. Right. You know, the carnal mind is enmity against God, mm -hmm. but it tells you very much in the scriptures that you are to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so you must stay in the word of God. Yes. So God will give you this power, he tells you, and with all of the cry baby stuff we'll call it I can't do this I can't do that I can't serve God I can't quit this he tells you in John 1 verse 12 and that's St. John's gospel verse 12 chapter 1 as many as he received me gave me him the power he tells you Acts 1 8 you shall receive it if you repent Amen. and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost yes so people have to look at the last will. He tells you how to receive this power mm -hmm. to be an amazing person. Mm -hmm. And I think anyone that will receive this power and be an amazing person, they've got eternal life. They've got eternal riches. They've got mansions to look forward to. They're going to be sitting up on thrones judging in the book of Revelations, even the Gentile believers who were Gentiles, mm -hmm. but have now been uh, baptized into the uh, the body of Christ. Body of Christ, and they're of the household of faith, which is the household of God. All of these people are going to be great people. Yes. And I think there's going to be some Jews. I mean, you've got to look at Jesus Christ. You've got to look at the apostles. They were all Jews. Yes. What about all the converts they had? They were all Jews. Yeah, they were. At Antioch, that's where they first were called Christians. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we're living in this time now when we have to take a stand for God and say, look, I want that royal anointing and I'm going to fight for it. I'm going to get up and pray. I'm going to fast. Tell us what 
The Bible said in Isaiah chapter 58, one of the ways to take the curses out of your family and out of your home. Amen. Isaiah chapter 58, that's the fast where if you fast, that is according to the scriptures, he says in verse 8, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. So fasting is a very good way to break all of this stuff. You look at Elijah, yes. he fasted 40 days. Mm -hmm. We know our brother here, I don't want to brag about it, but he fasted 30 days. Yeah. I was amazed that he actually went 30. I thought he went 21. But that's without food. That's with water only. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people today have been brainwashed with these people they hire on TBN to get up and tell them, yeah, that's just, you know, uh, pleasant bread. You know, he didn't eat any of that. I left my bread off for lunch. <laughs> Them lying devils. I mean, it's so sad that you got ignorant people that are have no fear of God, Amen. and they will do it for money and get up and say anything against the Bible. But when you get in God's business and you start running your mouth about the Bible, they're you, invoking a curse upon them. Invoking a curse upon them, and it's a great curse according to Galatians 1, yes. verses 5 through 8. You can see if any man preach any other gospel, He'll be under a great curse, Amen. and I don't think they can be delivered. No. Amen. And um, the Bible is so, um, basically, you can't change God's word. Jesus is the word. And that, I mean, if you try, try, try to change the gospel of the word, then you're trying to change Jesus, because Jesus changes not. And the Bible says in Revelation chapter 22, he says, you cannot add or take away from the words of this book. He says, if you take away from the words of the book, he your name will be taken out of the Lamb's book of life. Okay. I want you to look, all the believers that can go to Acts chapter 2, verse 42, you can find out these are the ways that the early church was led. I don't care if times has changed. Our Bible does not change. One thing they did, they stayed steadfastly in the doctrine of the apostles. And I mean steadfastly. They was not moved. Mm -hmm. They liked fellowship, the breaking of bread, and prayer. And they stayed in these things to keep their walk with God. Amen. And you know, they had many miracles, they had many converts, and I would encourage everyone, if you're not in a church where you can get fed, find a church that has prayer meetings, real prayer meetings. I don't look for you to find a big one. Get out of those big churches that are trying to turn people over to uh, idiocy and cause them to do things that's entirely against the Bible. Get around fellowship with believers, and this is one of the things they did, breaking bread together. Stay with your people. Learn to stay with people that has prayer meetings. I believe in midnight prayer. I be, believe in rising in the early. You can be a miraculous person. That royal touch that Jacob or Israel had touched Ephraim, Riz, Ephraim with went to waste. With a great calling of God, they did not serve the Lord. Many people today have a high calling of God that's in Christ Jesus, and I encourage you to stay in the faith. Why don't you write to me and become a monthly partner with me? I'll send you some DVDs, CDs every month, and uh, I'd really appreciate hearing from you. If you don't want to be a partner or can't make a one-time gift, well, you could write to me anyway. Uh, I'll be glad to give you a CD or DVD, and I'll pay for it out of my pocket. None of us people here take salaries out of the ministry. Everything we do is for you and to help people even in other countries. My name is Pastor Inman. You spell it I-N-M-A-N. My address is 518 Pleasant Valley Avenue. 518 Pleasant Valley Avenue. And that's Dayton, Ohio, 45404. You can email me at pastorinman at att.net. You can call us at 937-235-0246. I believe if you stay in the scriptures, I believe you'll have a great reward. And I believe that one day you'll be a great person. And you know what? Through pay, faith and patience, you will receive the gift of God. And I believe if you stay in the scriptures, you'll be a strong person. I'm Pastor Inman. Thank you for listening to our program. You've been listening to the Word of Deliverance. Have a great day. <laughs>